people of ABC News. Together, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. Hi, I'm Ernie Anastas. Join me and my family for our special program, Families. We'll look at the new role today's fathers are playing. So join us. Saturday, July 26th at 7.30. Cats, the number one musical in America. Cats, the world's most thrilling theatrical event. There's just never been anything like it. Cats, it sings, it soars, it dances and dazzles. The memory of Cats will live forever. The seven-time Tony Award winner, the once-in-a-lifetime experience, the best musical. In a word, Cats at the Winter Garden Theater. Call 239-6200 for tickets. Back by popular demand, ShopRite's fabulous half-price sale. Nobody does it like ShopRite. Over 50 prices cut in half this week. Hydrox or Vienna Finger Cookies, half price, 99 cents. Farm Flavor Grape Jelly, half price, 89 cents. So, come to ShopRite this week and... Over 50 prices cut in half this week. New York celebrates the royal wedding of Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson at five. Continuing now our coverage of this royal wedding of Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson. The weather is strange here in yes. London. One A minute, ago we had sunshine. One minute it's <laughs> the sunny and it's hot, and the next minute it's cloudy and cool. It rained a bit this morning. Uh, I think that may have kept a lot of people from coming out here in the very beginning, but the crowds seem to be coming yeah, out a bit more now. No forecast one's quite sure. is more optimistic than it might have been earlier in the week. That's, they were almost They wished it would be rain. wonderful. Yes. Well. With us now, Nigel Dempster, a columnist for the Daily Mail, and also the royal biographer, Anthony Holden, both avid royal watchers. And, Anthony, right now, people are beginning to arrive, as we've seen at the Abbey, many of the dignitaries showing up and the guests for the wedding. Uh, who's determined the protocol of who arrives when in what order? Well, a very complex business on a case like this with a lot of expensive and distinguished egos at stake. I think, actually, they're mostly in there now. Yes. We saw Mrs. Reagan arrive... Uh, about 10 to, so that's about 40 minutes before the ceremony actually is going to begin. And I think, obviously, the least important people arrive first. I mean, everybody in there today is fairly important, but they've been arriving since half an hour before this broadcast began, so some of them have been there 90 minutes. Uh, but the Queen's on her way, I think, or the, you see the big cars beginning to move out there now. Uh, maybe it's the only time in her life that Sarah will keep the Queen waiting today. Even the Queen's going to sit there for <laughs> an hour or something, isn't she? And, of course, we will be joining the... Uh procession when the queen leaves buckingham palace no. now i'd also like to know the, all, the bridesmaid who who are the bridesmaids and the, the pages they're all relations oh, wait one second here we hear look oh, here look. we see it we were just saying that the queen was going to be leaving soon the queen's carriage is about to come out the grand entrance of buckingham palace and that will be the beginning of the queen's procession down the mall and down the route to westminster abbey gives a royal salute and the band plays the national anthem as the queen drives through the four court. It's Philip saluting as they come through the gate. The queen dressed in a powder blue. Is that an appropriate description? I would say that's appropriate. <laughs> they have been working on these carriages for the last several months, making sure that every last bit of grass is polished and Queen Mum. She's really the favorite royalty. Is that, would that Isn't be that fair to say? She's, she's the grandmother of England and of Great Britain, of course. She is really the person that we all love the most because she's enduring. She recovered from an attack of cancer, a bout of cancer years ago. Here on the page, oh, look at I want to point out, those are the little bridesmaids that are going by, and, and Sarah has chosen lots of, of little people. Little people, she calls them. They're all, of course, relations of hers. Half-sisters, sisters, children, brothers. And here's Diana. Oh, Sorry, Nigel. Well, there's Diana, though, and, and, and Prince Philip. I mean, Prince Charles. Prince Charles, in this case. Now, they're so they wedding, come of right course, the five years court. ago. Yes. Yeah. However, they were 
not what was married. That they were not married at Westminster okay. Abbey. They were married at St. Paul's. A larger church and far more appropriate to the size of that occasion. And he's wearing the same uniform he wore when he stepped up the aisle of St. Paul's. And, of course, the replica uniform is going to be worn by Lieutenant Prince Andrew, at least Lieutenant the Duke of York, as he now is. That happened this morning, did it not, at 10 o'clock? At 10 o'clock. Prince Andrew made a quantum leap this morning from being a prince to a duke. And it really means that his children, his sons, will have hereditary titles. It also, though, means that, that Sarah... ...the last Duchess of York, and I think because her husband, who became King George VI, was the Duke of York, uh, that was Princess Anne, was the Princess Anne was the right uh, So, uh, Queen Mother is going to be... Dowager Duchess of York, I guess, from about an hour and a half Duchess. time from now. Queen Mother is a unique title. That is yeah. not a, how did that happen? Well, only because it's the first time, I think, that the outgoing queen and the incoming queen had the same name. Both Elizabeth. And to avoid confusion, if you talk about Queen Elizabeth, which a lot of Americans do, but it's so complicated, we forgive them for getting it wrong. You mean the Queen Mother. If you talk about the Queen, you call her the Queen. So if people talk about Queen Elizabeth, they're actually talking about her mother. But it is a kind of lumpy title as she goes with her daughter, Princess Margaret. Except we but must... she doesn't altogether like herself, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. In the American tradition, I fear we will be saying Queen Elizabeth when we That's mean right. the current <laughs> reigning queen. All right. We should, we should point out, too, that the, the fact that, that Prince... Andrew became the Duke of York this morning means that Sarah will not become a princess. Never become a princess. Andrew is the 14th Duke of York. It's a title that goes back 601 years. And she, when she says, I do, and the Archbishop of Canterbury pronounces the man and wife, she becomes Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of York. Anthony, the, the route itself is very historic. Could you describe? Yes, indeed. Well, they come down the mile, which obviously all this is close to traffic today. And uh, you can see Buckingham Palace in the background there. There have been huge crowds. I was there late last night and very early this morning. A lot of people were there all night. There's the Dowager Duchess. Uh, just looking at the Queen smiling like that, an interesting thing is that a lot of people think the Queen doesn't smile enough on occasions like this. There was a, But she has a, a problem with her face, believe it or not, a muscular problem. But uh, she, she's happy, even if she doesn't always look happy. Diana has That's been... That's an interesting hat. What do you think about a hat, Jane? Well, she's known for her interesting yeah. hats, is she not? Yeah. She really, I think, has, has caused quite a rage of hats being worn, not only here in England, but even in the United well, States. I think she's got a bit of a five. rivalry going with I was going to say, would, yeah. that, okay. would that fit yeah. the description of royal protocol for the day? I for think so, a, yes. A modest hat? I, I think that anyone wearing a large hat in the Abbey today would be... I think it would be knocked off their heads because you're obscuring it's very tightly packed. There's 1,800 people in there. They all want a view. Not many of them have got a good view. Duke and Duchess of Kent with their children. That's their son, the Earl of St. Andrews, who's just graduated from Cambridge University. There's the Duke of Gloucester, who is, of course, the first cousin of the Queen, the, and his mother, Princess Alice, Duchess of Gloucester. The Duchess of Gloucester is a Danish lady called Bagita. She's a very, very beautiful kid. They've got three children, including the oldest one there, the Earl of Ulster, named after our province in Northern Ireland. Not a very popular choice of title. And behind them, ah, here we have Prince and Princess Michael Kent. She, of course, yeah, she is in the a rather a for all last year yeah. when it was revealed that her father had been an honorary officer in the SS. She is Austrian stroke German, and she's a very controversial figure in the royal family, but she's added something to the enlivenment of the royal family. She's six foot tall, she looks very Germanic, and she uh, occasionally acts so. She's known sometimes as Princess Pushy, which is sad. Now, I think we have Edward and Andrew beginning to prepare for their departure. Uh, like behind that, the yes, glass there. Just in the forecourt of the palace there. I hope and Edward Edward's got Andrew, the ring in his pocket, I hope. Oh, he better. <laughs> yeah. Edward and Andrew, of course, uh, were the best men at, at Charles's Prince wedding, Charles were they not? Yes, they actually used they the word supporter in the royal It's very family. quaint, they is it not? Yeah, it's, uh, you can't have best men, I suppose, Anthony, so supporters it has to be. And Anthony, they are in the, the Landau, are they not today? Yeah, I think they're, they're all very historic, these coaches. I think they have uh, two lots ready in case it did rain. Uh, they were going to have closed coaches. There's a huge muse just to the left of that picture where all these coaches and horses are kept and maintained by a very big staff and wheeled out on these occasions. Otherwise, you don't get to see them. The public doesn't often get in to see them. Yes, I understand that the state land I was built in 1902. It actually can be used in either an open or closed uh, mm. for 
If it, even if it had rained today, I believe I they would have used it. If it had been it. heavy rain, she'd have wheeled out another. Uh, uh, it's it's going come. to be interesting to see whether we still have the glass carriage when uh, Sarah comes Indeed. out, because yes, that does not today. have a top. And, yes, uh, we do right. have the glass With the cloud cover that's just it's appeared. The weather's slightly worrying at the moment, isn't it, overhead? Yeah, you he's, have he's Prince, happy. Prince Edward dressed in his uniform as a Royal Marine. When he finishes his exams, he is going to become a Royal Marine officer. He's done all the basic training, and that is going to be his service career. And you can see his uniform as a Royal Marine Lieutenant. And on the left, Andrew's wearing the dress uniform of the Lieutenant of the Royal Navy, just like his brother. He's got a little tailcoat at the back. Isn't Edward going to uh, go into training for one of the tougher divisions of the Marines soon? Very much so. They've, they have they sought out the, the men from the boys, rather than like the American Marines. We, we'd like to think we're as tough as them. He's done it all. Uh, he's certainly not pussyfooted. He went through it all, and he came in the top ten. So Almost the equivalent of the American Rangers or Special Forces. Ex exactly. His next training cycle. Edward, of course, has just graduated from Cambridge University with a second-class degree, which is, convinces everybody that the examiners didn't cheat him and give him a first class. And, uh, and once again, as they come through the gates there, the Guard of, Guard of Honor will give the royal salute, and the band plays the first six bars of the national anthem for the royal highnesses as they drive through the forecourt. We were speaking of the military career of the sons of the queen, and in this case, uh, of course, the man of the hour and the day, Andrew, now Duke of York, uh, a helicopter pilot who served with distinction in the Falklands War. And some of his buddies from the Falklands campaign will be here in attendance later in the day. We'll be pointing them out. And he's, of course, going to continue his career in the Air Force, so yes. the Duchess will be for a while just be another GI bride. Historically, the, the, the royalty, the men, do have brief military careers, but in this case, we're talking about a serious one. Yes, indeed. Well, Prince Charles is the heir to the throne, did a stint in all three of the forces. That's yes. traditional. Um, Andrew's opted for the helicopter division, and he's one of the first members of a royal family that close to the monarch to have served in an actual war for a very long time and really won his spurs in the Falklands. If there were ever any doubt over the Randy Andy tag and some of the slightly more questionable episodes in his past, he, he grew up in the Falklands. You know, it was interesting to me to uh, see a quote from Prince Philip, his father, who said, yes, I'm delighted that he's getting married, but it's not to keep him out of trouble because he's never been in trouble in the conventional <laughs> sense of the, of the British That's tabloids. Story he's sticking to it today. <laughs> the interesting thing about Andrew is that he's going to start a new, uh, a new career within the fleet air arm in September. He's going on an instructor's course, which lasts for five months, and then in February, he finishes that and goes to Portland, where he then instructs young men coming into the fleet air arm in the use of a Lynx helicopter. You know, we sometimes forget that when Queen Elizabeth, and by that I mean the currently reigning queen, uh, was first married, she was not yet the queen, and was simply the wife of a naval officer, uh, Prince Philip, and lived the life of a naval officer, chasing him around from one posting to another. And of course, when she married Prince Philip, he was doing the exact same course, which Andrew has just finished, which is down at Greenwich, the lieutenant's course. Andrew has got a slight problem ahead of him, because if he ever wants to be a captain of a ship, he's got to start his education in the Navy all over again. At the moment, he can only go as far as a helicopter pilot because you have to go back and, as the Americans would say, get your ticket punch. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I thought it was very interesting last night when Sarah talked all about how she wanted to learn how to fly a helicopter because she felt, first of all, <laughs> it was for herself as a personal challenge and also because she wanted to be able to sit down at dinner at night and talk <laughs> with her husband, understand all the technical language and, and relate to what he was well, saying. Knowing how boisterous Sarah is and knowing her quite well <laughs> in that matter, the last thing I want to do is ever go up in a helicopter or be anywhere near <laughs> where she is in a helicopter. I don't trust her. I think, I think this uh, shows a too. nice uh, competitive twang to this marriage already. She wants to be a better pilot than he is. That's what she wants. <laughs> yes. Well, As I understand it also that uh, Andrew will get a $44,000 raise when he gets married. He, he already earns $20,000 a year, by the way, as a naval helicopter pilot. Okay. And his state, uh, his state civil list payment is, is $30,000, and it's going up to $75,000. All right, and now you hear the applause and the cheering beginning to pick up right behind us we because can hear the, horses. the Queen's carriage is coming into Parliament Square. There you see Big Ben in the background. And uh, the crowd that we hear now is not just over the television monitor. It's right here with us 
as the Queen arrives with Prince Philip. And we should say that Queen Elizabeth also was married in the Westminster Abbey, was she not? It was a wonderful occasion, and to see the dress now, see how old-fashioned it looked. This is a very special part of uh, history for the royal family, because, of course, at this very abbey in November 1973, Princess Anne, the Queen's only daughter, got married here. In 1947, when the Queen was married, it was the first time that a royal wedding had been broadcast on the radio, even, let alone television, and uh, the church authorities got very worried about it because they thought people might listen in pubs which they didn't think was right. And they also thought women might listen to the radio without wearing hats, which in 1947 was deemed unsuitable. It's wonderful to see the Queen in an open carriage like that, but all around us on the rooftops, policemen and police marksmen are situated. You can't see them, of course. The security is here, but it is very, very discreet. And you wouldn't realize that some of those postillions in uniform are, in fact, detectives with, with guns. Um, there has been, in fact, an extremely thorough sweep of this area prior to the arrival of the event today. There, there we saw. just saw a shot from the roof of some of the security people. The Queen's carriage passing directly below us now as she arrives here at Westminster Hall. She's bang on time. This I don't see any uh, nervous signs in the young groom there. The new Duke of York looks very confident to me. Yes. Do you think he had a, a whiskey mac or a brandy before he left the palace? I'll let you answer that. <laughs> <laughs> you would know better than we would. <clears throat> oh, what I think a, there might be a hip marvelous task in setting. There somewhere, I, think. I, I, I just must say, I mean, we are not in the United States used to seeing this kind of color and pageantry, and the crowds are over it as all the carriages are now arriving. I think there's going to be trouble later when they have a post-mortem on this because he's a minute and a half late. Uh, and the Queen, of course, is there at the front the door. Getting out of the carriage. Interestingly enough, when uh, she was uh, thinking about marriage and uh, wanted to marry Prince Philip, uh, her father, King George, thought maybe she hadn't met enough young men well, to make him. a she proper... She was only 13 when she met him. That's right, and she really has had no other she had a And the yeah. family uh, took her off to Australia to meet some other young men and That's see right. if she really was serious about this man. And in fact, she was. When they came home from Australia, it's, they got there. It's a wonderful love story of our Queen because she has loved one man now since 1939 when she first set eyes on the 18-year-old Prince Philip, who was then at Dartmouth, where, of course, Andrew and went to. she was never, 13 at the time. She was 13, and she never looked at another man in her life. And it's a, an enduring love affair. I think it's just quite sensational. It's on. And here comes Look the at the best. Look at the and man look at of the Andrew. day. He's a very handsome young man, this supporter, Prince Edward. He's got all his father's looks. Whereas Prince Andrew's got a bit of both. And, of course, Prince Charles looks very like his mother. Yes. One of the effects of today is really how middle-aged it's beginning to make Prince Charles look all this, I'm afraid. I mean, uh, Andrew and there's the Queen greeting some of the clergy. And it's interesting clergy. that, that uh, although we've always thought of Charles as the heir apparent, he may well be into his 60s before he ever oh, becomes... that's right. He'd I probably be a grandfather like... I wouldn't Edward place any bets on 70 either. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> really? A very hearty queen. Well, Nigel, how long might it be before we have another royal wedding? I mean, we do have Edward there. Prince Edward has got a girlfriend, and you won't believe what she is. She's a Cambridge undergraduate, but she's an ice hockey player. And I think the least he could do is send her off to the Edmonton Oilers or something like that to earn a, li <laughs> a living. He, he, in fact, invited her today, and she's yes, attending the wedding. Yes, she's here. Eleanor Waitman. She's a jolly pretty girl. She doesn't look like uh, Wayne Gretzky, but she's equally adept as far as Cambridge ice hockey goes. She's rather wonderful. Edward's a bit miffed because his father hasn't got much hair. As you know, Prince Charles has got a bald spot. Prince Andrew has got all the hair in the world, and Edward, at the age of 22, is starting to go bald. Yeah. And he's not a happy boy. There we and see Diana. Diana. It's unusual to see them all getting in line like And this. Princess they're, Anne to the left there. And in front of them, Princess hearing. Margaret. Now, Princess Margaret didn't go to Major Ron Ferguson's party on Monday night, and people are very worried about her health. I just hope, and we all hope, that it is not an, uh, an occurrence of what caused her to have a, a, a biopsy back in January of last year. She's not looking well at the moment, either. 
I think it's very brave of her to come out today because, of course, a very strenuous occasion for every member of the royal family. And the Queen Mother, look at her. She's 86 next month. She's absolutely terrific for her age. And it's reasonably well known and not denied that um, she likes the odd nip of gin. She's a great advert for the <laughs> gin staying uh, power. Has, of... Hasn't she already become quite a friend of Sarah's? She, well, she tends on these occasions, as she did with Diana, to take her, uh, whatever the feminine of a vuncular role is. And, of course, the bride in both cases has stayed with the Queen Mother at Clarence House the last few days before the wedding. And she gives them a few tips, a kind of crash course in how to be royal. Uh, there was the famous incident with Diana where she went out in the low-cut black dress. Um, just her first public engagement, a very daring low-cut black dress, which I thought was a, a kind of symbol from her. I'm not going to lose my identity to the royal family. I'm going to stay me. And I think she got quite firmly ticked off by, by the Queen Mother about that. We don't wear those sort of dresses. We just saw the escort from Major Ron Ferguson's old regiment, the lifeguards, coming towards Clarence House, and they're going to escort the carriage of the bride-to-be, the future Duchess of York. And here we start the bride's carriage procession, leaving oh, first Clarence House, that dress. There, the yeah. last carriage. And look at the flowers around that head. Look at the flowers and around. She's got the closed carriage, the hasn't she? Maybe yes, she's frightened yes, of rain. Yes, I do see. Yeah. in the closed the carriage. carriage no. Yeah. Apparently yeah. they didn't trust well, it's the weather. Pretty black clouds over where she's coming yeah. from. It's directly up there. She doesn't want to risk her hairdo today. And I heard a rumor early this morning, we haven't seen yet, that she's got a posy of real flowers in her hair. It should be rather pretty if we can see it. Um, but the rain wouldn't do that much good either. I remember last year at the royal wedding of Charles and Diana that within hours, I believe within five hours, they had copies of Diana's dress in the stores here. Right. And I understand yeah. that by 3 o'clock this afternoon, they expect copies of Sarah's dress in the stores so for about 1,500 hours. As steps out of that coach, fact, they'll be they, coming off the production line. They have in. seamstresses and designers standing by yeah. watching television, even as we are, taking down uh, sketches of every detail of this dress. And it will be in shops here in London this afternoon. What well, they won't be able about to do is New York to tomorrow. 12 to $1,300 US. Yeah. <laughs> we should just point out that the, the bride today had the option right now of waiting a little while and leaving a little bit later. And she said, no, 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 I do not want to be late to my wedding. And she yeah. chose to come out at the prescribed time. And there she is waving at the crowds. And this, of course, is what everyone has lined up along the streets to see. They want a glimpse of the commoner who today will come out a duchess. I've got to say, because I find it a fascinating story that a young man named Andrew McGill will help Sarah to get off the coach when it arrives here at Westminster Abbey, and he will also make sure her gown and train remain intact. Andrew got his job two years ago by answering an ad in the job center asking for, quote, footman in large household London, possibility of travel, unquote. <laughs> Andrew is the son of a plumber. <laughs> I, I, I find that very are. democratic, yeah. yes. What we won't be able to see, and I don't think the people copying the dress will be able to see, that woven into the train are bees, which is part of Sarah's father's family coat of arms, and anchors, obviously, to symbolize the fact that Andrew is a naval person. <laughs> very delicately woven into the train. And there's the groom arriving at the abbey just beneath us now. Yes. Yeah. I should say that the information about this dress has been embargoed until right about now, but I can say that this dress is made of a very rich ivory silk, duchess satin. They have been weaving all of the material for her dress and for the bridesmaids' dress, especially for this event. It has a fitted boned bodice, which we'll see. The neckline is all lined with pearls. She has a train, by the way, which you will see. It's about 17 and a half feet long. Everybody was waiting to see if she she would, in fact, have a long train. And she promised us last night in her interview that you'll never see another wedding dress like this. That's a tall order to live up to. Well, the train has this A on it, uh, yes. an acrylic A. The... Now, here is the groom arriving. Prince Andrew, Prince Edward, arriving at the door of Westminster Abbey. And about 500 yards behind them, of course, Major Ron Ferguson, the awfully proud father of the bride-to-be, is chatting her way through the mall. And in, the, in past ceremonies, of course, Major Ron Ferguson, who commanded the Sovereign's escort of the lifeguards, would have been riding alongside the very same carriage. Mm. And I understand that uh, Andrew is wearing two medals, the Jubilee Medal and the Falklands Medal there on his uniform. Nigel, the two brothers seem to have become closer since Andrew and Sarah have been dating. Would that be fair to say? I think the two brothers, because they've been parted by their different jobs, Andrew's been on a boat up until March this year, or I should call it a ship before naval people 
Yes, <laughs> Paul Keel, uh, Keel Hall, me. He's been on a boat up until uh, a ship up until March of this year, and Andrew, of course, has been away at Cambridge. And so they have spent the last three years very much apart, except on family occasions and holidays. But this, of course, has certainly united them. Andrew has got a, a, a very sort of paternalistic uh, feeling towards Edward because Edward is a bit younger. He's had a difficult time in his life being the youngest of the family, neglected rather. The Queen has always favoured Andrew. It's no secret in the royal family that Andrew is a blue-eyed boy. And Andrew, I understand, will not wait at the altar for the 10 minutes as is tradition. He will go back and, and wait for his time to come out. We were speaking of uh, Major Ronald Ferguson, the uh, father of the bride, 54 years old, his closest royal friend, Prince Charles, because of a polo connection. He's the polo manager to Prince Charles, but he's got an older polo connection because back in the 60s and 70s, he used to play for the Windsor Park team, and his captain was then a certain Prince Philip. So he's known the royal family all their lives, and of course, Sarah has been known to the Queen and the rest of the royal family since she was a toddler, because Ron Ferguson not only was in the Sovereign's Escort, but he lived very close to Windsor Castle. And we should point out to avoid confusion that uh, Sarah's mother left her father, what, some 14 years ago. She's about 14 ago, years old. And, uh, in 1974, there had been a, a, a gradual uh, worsening of the marriage, mm -hmm. and eventually Sarah's mother, who was called Susie, met a polo player who, had, in fact, played against uh, Major Ron Ferguson in many matches, and he's an Argentinian called Hector Barantes. He's a couple years younger than Susie. He's 48, she's 50. And they got married in 1976, and they now live 600 miles out in the Pampas from Buenos Aires. He's got not a very good seat at the Abbey. He's seated somewhere away. Of course, Mrs. Barranti, i.e. Sarah's mother, will be sitting right next door to Sarah's father. And I was going to say, Anthony, that there is a bit of a protocol problem here, because now you have Major Ferguson also remarried. That's right. And it's uh, with a, another family. And, uh, so how has this been handled? It's pretty unusual in royal weddings to have uh, divorces having take place, although, of course, Princess Diana's parents it was true of as well. Yes. And uh, I think a lot of delicate lessons were learned last time around, which are being implemented today. But you have the added problem this time around that uh, Sarah's stepfather is of course Argentinian. That's There's been right. a lot of uh, speculation as to whether this would help relations Andrew between the two countries. Andrew having fought in the Falklands War and so on. And I mean, I was just thinking while we're talking about polo, that it's still difficult polo, of course, because of all this is an incredibly fashionable game here at the yes. moment. Everybody, they met on a polo field, so all the uh, eligible young women looking for husbands and vice versa are heading for the polo fields at the moment. But you can't play polo against an Argentinian team in this country. The problem yeah. with the Argentines is, of course, they have never not, they have never not declared uh, peace with us. That's we right. are, yeah, we are they, still at war with the Argentines yeah. as far so, as they're concerned. So what is the consensus here? How are Britons taking the fact of the uh, Argentinian stepfather being here? Well, don't forget they beat us out of the World Cup football, too. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I was going to add let's get round to the really important <laughs> things here. <laughs> I think uh, that the Britain seal, that it's a nice gesture of the Queen. She could have banned him, of course, from the wedding, but it's a very healing gesture to have Hector Barantes here. He will be sitting across the table for her at the wedding breakfast in a couple of hours' time, and having Hector Barantes over here, invited to all the functions, is seen as a gesture by the Queen to heal the rift that goes on between our two countries over the South Falkland Islands, which uh, we claim sovereignty of. And this now. particular Queen has yeah. done a... Oh, this is... Yes, we're seeing the... Uh, with her father here. I think right. the people in the United yeah. States might be interested in knowing that Sarah did spend some time in our country. She lived in Squaw Valley, California, uh, which is very close to my hometown of Sacramento, mm -hmm. California. And she is a very avid skier and, in fact, was That's a right. ski instructor there while she lived there. And she lived with the family, uh, the Hubbardies, whose son also then went to live with the Barates down in, in South yes. America. Well, we haven't yet uh, tackled the subject of uh, Sarah being the first bride for some time to go down the aisle while we British know that she has what we euphemize as a past, which also takes in California, I think. Uh, and, you know, relating to what we were just talking to about the in-laws and the divorces, I think it's very important that this particular queen has, in 34 years of her reign, advanced the morality of the monarchy, which these days is very much a symbol of family life much more in touch with the real times than it was when she became queen. Remember, up until October of last year, Sarah was living with another man. 
she'd spent three years with Paddy McNally, who's a racing figure. He used to be the manager of three times world champion Nicky Lauda. She lived with him for three years, and his great attraction was that, of course, that he was a skiing person, and uh, she really enjoyed. And he's invited her today with his two sons, who she looked after, with his brother, with his new girlfriend, and with his parents. And now we see the royal carriage making one of the last turns before we're going to have our bride on the scene here. Head south, the famous war memorial in Whitehall, where all the government offices, Downing Street just there on the left, although the opulent no doubt is in the Abbey by now. Uh, whether or not she's talking to the Queen today, we don't know. Well, they're that's in the middle of a bit of a that's spat. That's very at the interesting. There has been in the papers here uh, a bit of a row between mm. the Queen and Prime Minister Thatcher over Prime Minister Thatcher's government's policies towards South Africa. Well, it's a very unusual thing, that, and I personally think it's a rather good thing that it's happened this week because with the world looking at the monarchy this closely, uh, maybe thinking this is all candy floss and ritual, they are seeing that the Queen does still have an important constitutional role in this country. It's defined as to advise, to encourage, and to warn her prime ministers. But she has been Queen 34 years. She's had eight prime ministers. She reads cabinet papers. She's a very, very savvy lady. And if she believes that this issue is going to break up the Commonwealth, let alone destroy the Commonwealth Games, then she's going to make her feelings felt. And uh, I think a lot of people are all in favor of it. In the background of our American audience, many of the Commonwealth countries have withdrawn from the Commonwealth Games in protest over the Thatcher government's refusal to impose sanctions against the white major minority government in South Africa. And as you were saying, the Queen would never presume to dictate policy, cannot constitutionally, she cannot constitutionally but, but nonetheless she meets regularly with the Prime Minister. Every Tuesday evening they have an audience and she indubitably has influence and clout with the politicians there. Now we see yeah, inside. That's the Duchess yeah. of Gloucester, the Danish-born Duchess of Gloucester in the white there with her two daughters and her son, the Earl of Ulster. Sitting beside her on her left is the Duke of Gloucester with the glasses, and sitting next to him in that royal blue is his mother, Princess Alice, Duchess of Gloucester. And in front, you have, of course, Prince Philip, the Queen, the Queen Mother, Prince Charles, Princess Anne, Diana, Princess Margaret. That's a little microcosm of everyone Margaret's who's... children, I think, beyond her there, aren't there? Viscount Lindley and... Uh, and our first real... Sarah Armstrong Jones. Our first real look here at the altar area where the wedding ceremony will take place. Now, you may hear right behind us the crowd, us, the crowd yeah, beginning to react to the approach the of Sarah's carriage, the covered carriage. For her too. Nobody the and open carriage around so that she can leave the Abbey in it if the weather gets totally safe. And of course, no one yet has seen her dress. Everybody is still waiting for her to step out of that carriage so that we can see her dress for the first time. And there's her bouquet, which will be left after the, today on the tomb of the unknown warrior in Westminster Abbey, a tradition started by Queen Elizabeth, I, the Queen Mother. Which, in fact, is an unknown soldier from France in World War I. They bring the car along just in case the coach breaks down. Was that yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was yeah. Well, make way for modern times. <laughs> and here they are, coming up right behind us now. And I must say, even for a colonist, what an exciting and marvelous scene. It is tremendous. Look there. There. She's got the royal wave off to a tee already, and she's not even married him yet. She's very she's skilled out, that royal wave. She's enjoying this all immensely, oh, yeah. 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 yeah of the lifeguards, Major Ron Ferguson's old regiment, riding beside the wheel in a traditional position. We mentioned earlier that this is not an official holiday, as was Prince Charles and Diana's wedding. And so you can see all around us, out of office buildings, uh, people looking. I wonder how nervous Sarah is right now. She well, says she's been right. enjoying all of this. It's, it's, you're nervous on your wedding day. <laughs> there's, there's no getting around it. 